Hello and welcome back to the Tastel Chess Tournament, the penultimate uh, 12th round. And uh, the game of the round, the key game is, is very obvious because the, the soul leader, the homeboy Anish Giri, is leading uh, half, uh, by half a point, is taking Al Reza Firuja, who is uh, one of the, of the members of the chasing group, uh, uh, half point behind. So, uh, well, without further ado, actually, let's just uh, uh, go to the game. So, Anish starts with the move uh, 1 e4. And already Firuja has a has a surprise for him. He replies with e6, the French defense. And actually Firuja, um, I, I don't think he played the French at the highest level uh, previously. So his main opening is actually c6, which is, has some similarities to e6, but still it's it's quite different. So comes e6, d4, d5, and Anish uh, goes on with nice c3. And actually Anish recently had a course on, on the French defense, which is like a half half serious uh, serious course but still he is he's very much uh, mm, actually he's, he's an, in his act of every opening anyway so Anish, Anish knows everything so knight c3 is, is clear the critical move in the French and now comes knight f6 so no bishop b4 which would be the other other main line but no Firuja has uh, knight f6 in his uh, uh, in his preparation and now comes e5 knight d7 f4 all these moves have been played uh, actually hundreds of thousands of times, knight f3, knight c6, um, bishop e3, a6, and this is the point where uh, Anish decided to not to go with the main, main uh, mainstream you could play here, queen d2, or maybe even bishop e2, however Anish decided to play the move a3, which is a bit of um, uh, a rare line, uh, and it also caught, uh, caught Firuja uh, by surprise a bit. So here uh, we play the move c takes d4, and after knight d4, bishop c5, queen d2, we are more or less back to normal territories, where white already played the e3 move, which uh, he actually often does anyway. So now black uh, castles, comes bishop e2, so white is going to castle also short, um, queen c7, and actually uh, queen c7 castle, I think this is the position where uh, the novelty comes, sort of, or a new move, but it's, it's very unlikely to be to have it prepared, but b6 is the is a new move, and now we have a new position. Um, the point is, of course, to just develop your bishop. And that's why you actually played your queen c7 move before, to be able to protect this, this knight and play the move b6. And now comes uh, knight takes c6, queen takes c6, and here comes the whole point of playing a3. Now white can push the pawn to b4. And after bishop e3, queen takes e3, Actually, uh, we could stop for a, for a second and evaluate the position. So it is very obvious that uh, well, black has the so-called French bishop, which is just uh, super weak. It's gonna go to b7 though. Um, but nevertheless, that's the so-called bad bishop. And white has uh, really good place pieces. Bishop could go to d3 and would like to reroute the knight to e2 and d4. And if white can do that, then white would be in a a super good shape, then would have a free hand to just uh, push f5 at some point, attack the black king, and white is just doing horribly, horribly good. So black immediately needs to, needs to go for some counter chances, and uh, well, one thing is try to push, play bishop b7, and then try to push for d4, and also try to use as this b pawn is already advanced. There's no protection of this c3 knight, so you can quickly also put a rook on c8 and put some pressure on the c line. So here comes the move uh, bishop b7. And there is a very obvious threat of d4, discover attack, and try to take bishop, uh, queen takes d2 checkmate. Uh, however, uh, Anish had a very nice move to, to counter this. So here actually I invite you to stop the video and find this very nice move. So the move is actually, it's, it's very straightforward, that's what you would like to do, but requires some tactical justification, that is bishop d3. And the obvious immediate point is if black would take the seemingly free piece, then obviously there's a discover attack bishop h7 and takes, and after queen, c, uh, queen 3 c black just lost the queen. So this doesn't work, uh, otherwise white has a very uh, uh, quick uh, rearranging move of knight e2, knight e4, so black uh, absolutely has to, has to do something here. So black plays the move d4, which uh, uh, attacks this this g2 pawn uh, and here here the whole point was that white can play the move queen e4 and it's not only blocks the the 
the queen, but also attacks with king g7. So if you play something like queen c3, there is checkmate uh, on h7. So after queen e4, black needs to take, and now white can take back on e4. And here came uh, bishop d5. And actually, so again, if we stop, stop again for, for a bit, um, so black managed to play this d5, d4, so the bishop is not so weak anymore. However, the d4 pawn did become weak. So white's plan is to somehow go around uh, this d4 pawn, maybe put a, put a rook on d1, and then try to take this, this pawn. For the time being, this black knight is actually quite passive, and uh, well, white really has the, has the momentum now to create something. And uh, punish goes with knight g5, very logical move. Attack this pawn, and if black plays g6, that's happened, and now Anish plays knight f3, attacking this uh, this uh, pawn, and black needs to uh, exchange the bishop for this rook. So now we, we transpose a bit of the structure, but still, this is d for uh, weakness, and white also has now the bishop against the knight, which is clearly his advantage. And also there is this a6 pawn that's, uh, for the time being, you have to hang on to defending this. So here, uh, Alireza plays a very committal, but actually a quite a good move. So again, actually, I invite you to stop the video and try to find out uh, what this move is. Um, so here, black plays the move b5, which looks very counterintuitive at first, because you're fixing your pawns on the, on the square of, uh, of, of the, on the light square, which is the, the, the white bishop. Uh, however, you really need to create some counter, counter chances with knight b6 and knight d5. Um, so now comes bishop e4, rook a d8, and now rook d3 attacking this, uh, uh, this pawn, but now black has the move knight b6. And now this rook actually protects, however, as I mentioned, now the problem comes that after bishop b7, these guys are actually falling. So here comes knight a4, bishop takes a6, and knight c3. And the whole point of this maneuver was that now the white bishop actually looking quite silly, and rook d7 is a huge threat of uh, trying to chat this bishop. So here uh, Anish needs to save the bishop with bishop b7, but now black can also take the pawn back with knight e2 check, king takes f uh, king f2 and knight takes f4, and it actually also attacks this rook. And now white goes back to rook d2. And here actually comes the, the very critical moment of the game. So both players have about uh, 20 to 30 minutes, Anish has a little bit more, uh, Firuj a little bit less, as normally he's, uh, he's in quite some time, time trouble. And here, Black's best move would have been to play f6, trying to uh, open up the position uh, on the king side. And after e takes f, rook takes f, you're trying to push further with e5, so something like king g1 comes, e5. And Black has quite some activity. There is still the weakness of b5 and the potential on the queen side passer. But uh, for the time being, Black is doing, uh, doing alright. He's uh, active enough to hold, uh, hold the equality. However, after rook d2, Firuja went on... Um, with a very direct move with d3. And this turns out to be actually a mistake. So here I invite you to stop the video and try to find the best way, to, well, not the best way because the best way is ridiculous, but a good way to continue for white. So one way that you can, uh, or one thing that you can do as white, if you take on d3, then black takes back king e3 and knight takes e5, and then you realize it's really not, not a good thing to, to do. So this is the, the obvious that uh, Firuja, Firuja planned, but of course this is not how Anish, Anish reacts here. So here the best computer move is, well, as I mentioned, it's ridiculous, it's actually c4. And you basically sacrifice this pawn after b takes c4, black has two connected passports in the center, seemingly just c3 and uh, rolling over you. However, white can actually uh, gain back both, both the pawns. So white can play the move rook c1, attacking this guy, and if you play rook d4, then after bishop a6, the white uh, bishop comes back, and you're actually going to take down these pawns, you're going to play king e3, kick out this knight, take the other pawn, and white is just winning. But uh, this is this is just uh, an amazing move, and only computers can do this, even if Anish sees and, and, uh, and calculates everything, he would still opt for something else, because a move like this can just run away your whole tournament, and once you are in the leading leading position, especially you don't want to do that. But the move he plays is also actually very, very good. Not sacrificing this pawn, but just push it by one. And then uh, the plan is very obvious, play king e3, take this pawn, and then use the fact that you have a bishop and you have this queen side majority. 
There's also this b5 pawn uh, fixed on the light squares which your bishop can attack and white advantage is just uh, actually quite quite large. And Alireza now goes on uh, goes on with knight a2 but this is very hard to hard to uh, sort of advise any better move however it's quite clear that after exchanging this uh, this uh, pawns and pieces in the center black is going to be in a huge trouble so now comes king e3 black takes the pawn and white takes the pawn rook takes king takes d3 knight a4 and here comes the very simple plan of, of white just plays the move rook c1 and the point is that you want to play bishop c6 and attack this guy and uh, yeah the, the, the position is looks quite hopeless actually black gives a check with rook d8 and here is a it is where actually Anish could have uh, could have done this one better. So again, I invite you to stop the video and try to find a way which way to go. You can go c2 or e2. So Anish went with e2, but actually king c2 is a very quick way to win because you have just bishop c6 uh, coming, so say king g7, bishop c6, c6. Only way to protect is rook b8, and the whole point is that now you play the move king b3 and use the fact that this knight is protected by this pawn, so you are really threatening to just take on b5, take this guy, and push these two pawns in the... Uh, well, make, make queens them. So, uh, this was the, the fastest way for, for a victory. I have Anish played the move king e2 here after check, uh, and came king g7, bishop c6, and now after rook b8, you are actually... Uh, well, actually, Anish simply just reverse black to the other plan. Now he would really like to go around with his king. He starts with the move rook c2 to avoid that the black knight uh, escapes. And now his plan is just to go around like this. And, uh, well, Firuja was in quite some time trouble. And we probably underestimated that white has this very strong plan of rerouting the... I simply just go around with the king. And he sort of waits uh, with king f8, which turns out to be a bad idea because after king d7... King e7, King c1, he realizes that he really needs to do something and pushes f6. But after e takes f6, King f6, he actually could have reached this position with just immediately going for uh, so in this position immediately pushing f6, which would have been a lot better to try to get some kind of play. Um, but probably you still lose after some move like Rook d2, the white rooks comes in, so it has also its own problems. But if you are waiting, then then comes just beautiful plan by Anish going around with the king. And well, black is in a, in a quite some, uh, not some kind of so it's in, in the disposition should be lost. And after king e5, actually the the players did reach the, the time control, so now they have some some uh, time to to calculate. So we made uh, move forty. However, white's plan actually does not change at all. You are just going further with your king. And let's see how Ali Reza tries to create his uh, counter chances. This is a thing that he's actually incredibly good at. Now no more uh, no more time time scramble. So let's see what he can do. So he brings the king king forward king d4, king b3 and king d3. So here uh, the king is now actually quite active. So your uh, generic way of winning actually uh, requires some calculations. If you take on b5, black might just take, and if you take here, actually your rook is also hanging. This is still actually a winning queen ending after rook takes b4. However, it requires a lot of uh, lot of calculation and it actually is reasonable that Anish did not opt for this one. So what he played here is he moved his uh, rook, I mean Anish moved his rook, but now comes Alireza with his pawn, trying to create some confusion. Now comes rook f7, very logical move, trying to activate going, uh, going behind uh, the pawn, also giving some uh, annoying checks here. And here comes, uh, in my opinion, the first, uh, uh, well, not brilliant, but like a very nice move from, from Ali Reza. He plays the move knight b6. Yes, knight b6. It just seemingly gives up the pawn with a check, that actually happens. Uh, and after bishop takes b5, king d4, comes just a4. And it just looks that white is completely, completely winning. However, here comes Ali Reza with his knight, jumping knight d5. And all of a sudden your pawns are actually not moving. So, uh, mm, you cannot push a5 because then uh, your, your, your bishop is hanging. If you move your bishop, your b-pawn is hanging. You really have to do something here. And the really professional way to win this would have been rook d7. The point is now you're threatening bishop c6. 
and if black plays the move rook b6, very very logical move, here comes a very nice move from white, just sidestepping with king e3. Realizing that actually black, uh, black does not have a direct uh, threat, your plan is now to remove your bishop and then uh, activate your pawns again. So if black plays something like e4, then you just remove your bishop, and now the pawns are rolling and uh, that's about it. It was a very nice plan, but uh, it was missed by, uh, by Anish. He played the move uh, rook takes h7, and now after e4 all of a sudden black has the counterplay. Just push this pawn in, maybe at some point you can sacrifice, put knight e3 and then um, the, the pawn can queen. So now it gets the, into dangerous territory for Anish. Comes rook f7, good move, e3, rook f1. And here comes the very nice, uh, very nice move again from Ali Reza jumping with his knight. Knight c3. And the point is that this knight just stands beautiful, you uh, prevent the rook d1 check, you obviously want to take here winning some pawns, you are uh, um, also preparing e2, and uh, if Blavai just removes the bishop with bishop c4, then the knight can go to an even nicer place with knight e4, threatening knight d2 check, actually the whole family would be hanging, this guy, this guy, and it's also a check, so all of a sudden white needs to uh, pay attention. So bishop c4 is not playable. The best move here, which was played by Anish, is rook f4 check. The king goes back, and now comes rook f3. And here Ali Reza can just uh, take the bishop. If you take back uh, as white, then black just comes with king d4, and all of a sudden this pawn is super strong, these pawns are very weak, and black is uh, easily making a draw. So you have to take the pawn, but after king d4, your rook is hanging, so you have to sacrifice the... so you cannot, you don't have time to take back. So you take back this knight, you have to play rook g3. And after knight d6, you eliminate the last pawn of black, so now no more risk for white, it's obviously either draw or, uh, or white wins. But, uh, yeah, so it's still not, not very obvious. Because you have these two pawns and these two pawns, but they're not connected. The black pieces are actually quite active, so there's still some work required for Anish. Now again, Ali Reza's knight start jumping, knight e4, a5. The black king goes back to be able to fight against these pawns. And here comes uh, probably the first really big mistake from Anish. He pushes his pawn forward. So normally you don't want to disbalance your pawns, you want them to run together, and if you have four of them, you want them all to run. So here the best point was just h4, and push a bit on this side, push a bit on the other side, on the queen side, and then sooner or later you're gonna win. But Anish went a bit hasty with this a6, and now comes knight c5 check, king a3, and knight d3. So now you're attacking this pawn, inviting white to push this pawn even further, which Anish did, but after a7, uh, rook e8, rook g7, here comes a, uh, here comes king c6, um, white pushes finally on the king side as well, and here black uh, can make a very nice move, and actually he's very close to drawing the game. So yeah, I invite you to stop the video, it's actually move 60, and there's only have a couple of minutes to decide on this, but he he probably already have a force in this, this option, and he does know how to uh, try to create a fortress. So obviously your knight is the one piece that you have to bring back, and the way you can do this is you play the move knight f4. You obviously hinting a bit towards this pawn, but the true plan is that you want to play knight e6, knight c7, locking the rook, and then finally take this pawn. This pawn is just a too weak and too forward. And here there is a there's a computer line starting with king a4, and after knight a6, b5 check, and with some uh, magical moves, white can still uh, hold on to his winning chances. However, this is very computerish, and Anish missed it. Anish played a very logical human move with g4, and from this point onwards, he actually sort of bungled it. Um, this is actually holdable for black now. Now comes knight e6, rook f7. Knight c7, and yeah, as I mentioned, this pawn is just hanging. And after g5, rook a7, king b2, white actually lost his uh, his sort of firepower. Uh, it's only, only uh, three pawns now, and black has a very easy way to, to sort of draw this, because g6, knight e6, h5, you can just attack the pawns, and the problem is that, so rook h8, and uh, the problem is if you play something like rook h7, comes rook g8, and black has the plan of just simply playing knight f4, sacking the knight even on g6, or, or probably just taking on h5, and then the one pawn is not enough to win the game. If white had the other pawn that he had before, then of course the rook ending would be still completely winning, and uh, he would win the game. 
However, without the, the additional pawn, we just lost an a7. Now black can just tag the piece and uh, and eventually draw the game. So for seeing all this, Anish just simply offered a draw, and um, that's how the game ended. So Ali Reza is just just was never over. He fought as hard as he could, and he he made the draw. But we can also actually um, blame Anish because out of the opening he had a very good position, he played uh, the end game very well, and he had just so many options to win the game. Um, especially this this took the seven thing I mentioned when he started to go for the pawns. It's very very strange, but also even the the four pawns against the knight, you just push pushing your pawns in a balanced way and you're gonna win. So it's very strange. However, with this draw, actually the tournament is still wide open because now Anish leads by half a point, but there is uh, all Firuja, um, Karuana, and also Jordan van Forest only half point behind. And if the if they have the same points, then they would go for a tie break. And actually, everyone can just win the last round. Nobody is playing against Carlton or something, so anything can really happen. So uh, yeah, I will definitely make the the last video as well. If you if you don't want to miss that, then you can actually subscribe to my channel, and then see you next time.